Part Two The moment I stepped into the cave, it was like all light blinked out of existence. It was darker than dark, completely pitch black. I turned my phone around, holding it in front of me like a priest with a crucifix, trying to banish the darkness away. It didn't work. I still couldn't see a thing. Google Maps spoke up. Continue forward for 150 feet, then turn right. I couldn't stop from chuckling to myself. A fat lot of good directions were when I couldn't see the hands in front of my face. I stumbled forward a few steps before the realization struck me. My phone had a flashlight app. I turned my phone back around and fumbled through my home screen until I found the app. I tapped it, and after a few seconds, a nice strong beam of light from the back-mounted LED cut through the darkness and into the cave in front of me. Honestly, the cave wasn't terribly impressive. Pretty darn average as far as I could tell. The floor was dirt, littered with dead leaves and rocks. Vines hung from the ceiling and the walls were solid stone. I reached out a hand and touched the walls. I withdrew it quickly. It was ice cold. I shivered. What the hell was I doing here? Continue forward for 150 feet, then turn right. Yeah, yeah, I replied, holding the phone back in front of me and making my way into the cave. The next stretch of time was basically uneventful. I took the next right I saw, and from then on it was mostly just a series of lefts and rights through the rocky winding passages. If anything was remarkable, it was how deep the tunnel seemed to go. I had been walking maybe 15 minutes. That may seem like a short amount of time, but you can cover a lot of distance, even just walking. This cave system was vast, and I was only covering a short section of it. After a while, Google's voice broke through the silence. In 20 feet, take the passage on the left. Whatever you say, Google. I moved steadily forward, switching from looking ahead to checking the map on the screen. Soon, I came to the turn. Take the passage on the left. I shined the light to my left. A deep fissure ran from the ceiling to the floor of the cave. It was wide, but not exactly human-friendly. I can't go there, I scoffed. It's way too small. I turned the flashlight back to the wide open passage in front of me. Why can't I just go this way? They wait for you down that path. Do not go there. Well, that was creepy. I felt an involuntary shudder run down my spine. Who's waiting for me down there? I asked. Take the passage on the left. Okay, fine. Be a cryptic asshole. Honestly, I was tempted to just say screw it and go down the broad path anyways. For all I knew, that was the way out and Google Maps was just digging me farther and farther into a dead end. I shined the light down the path once more. It would be easier, but then again... The more I looked down the broad passageway, the more something felt off. I couldn't place it, but you know that feeling you get, where your whole body just seems to be screaming at you that something's not right? Like your subconscious is reading the situation way more clearly than you are, and it's telling you to stay the hell away? Yeah, I was beginning to get that in spades. It wasn't until a few days later, looking back, that I realized what was wrong. The path was completely dark about ten feet ahead of me. I don't mean dark like the rest of the cave. I mean completely black. My flashlight didn't illuminate anything ten feet down the path. Not the walls, not the floor, nothing. It's like the darkness just swallowed the light and kept it from getting any farther. Who knows what would have happened if I had gone down that path, even just a short distance. I still get the shivers just thinking about it. I turned the flashlight back towards the fissure and sighed. I guess I was doing this. I steeled myself and then, phone first, began to squeeze myself through the giant crack in the wall. Now, I'm not super hefty, but I'm not exactly a stick either. It was a tight squeeze. At several points, I had to breathe out a bit just so I could fit through the hard, gritty hole in the wall. Luckily, it only took me a few moments to get through. The crack itself was only a couple feet deep, and soon I was out on the other side. I turned the flashlight into the area in front of me. It was bigger than I was expecting. I figured I'd just end up in more tunnels, but this was an entire chamber. 
maybe 30 feet high, 25 feet wide. Along the wall, broad outcroppings of stone stuck out at odd angles, creating lopsided shelves all the way to the ceiling. Climb to the top. What? I asked. Climb to the top. I shined my light up the wall, past the rocky shelves and to the ceiling. It took me a few seconds, but then I saw it. It was a long, broad crack where the ceiling met the wall. It was even smaller than the fissure in the tunnel. You're kidding me, I breathed. But at this point, I was starting to get over the stupid crap Google was asking me to do. Arguing with it wasn't helpful, and honestly, giving up and going back seemed less and less likely as an option. So I walked over to the far wall and lugged my tired self up onto the first rocky shelf. I wasn't exactly thrilled to be climbing up a rock wall. I'm not in great shape. I went to a climbing gym once, tried bouldering. I fell and landed weird, nearly tore my ACL. So clinging to the side of the cave wall wasn't my idea of a good time. But I kept at it. Shelf after rocky shelf, I made my way up the wall. Some shelves were really broad, enough for me to lie on my back and catch my breath for a minute. Some were butt-clenchingly narrow, requiring me to lean flat against the wall and hope to God I didn't lean back an inch too far. Whenever I had solid enough ground, I'd turn my phone around and shine it down to the floor below. That wasn't a particularly good idea. Thirty feet always looks much higher when you're at the top of it than when you're at the bottom. But I did it anyways. I guess I'm just curious like that. After what seemed like forever, I hauled myself up onto the last shelf and rolled over onto my back, my breathing ragged. I had done it. I had climbed to the top. I was contemplating just lying there and napping for a bit when my damn phone spoke up again. Continue forward for 30 yards. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, trying to will away the annoyance. I gave myself a minute and rolled over, shined my flashlight at the space between the wall and the ceiling. My heart stopped. It was a long, deep gash in the wall, maybe 15 feet wide, but only a little over a foot tall. It made the fissure in the tunnel look like a thoroughfare. Oh God, I whispered to myself. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I could feel myself begin to panic. I clenched my eyes shut and took a few calming breaths. I couldn't be freaking out right now, not if I was going to wedge myself into a rocky crevice deep underground. After a few moments of silently psyching myself up, I rolled onto my belly, held my phone out in front of me, and soldier crawled into the crack in the wall. I should tell you, I'm not claustrophobic, not in the least. I've found myself in all sorts of tight spaces in life. Closets, crowded subway cars, a car trunk at one point. Tight spaces have never phased me. But in that moment, crammed literally between a rock and a hard place, you get claustrophobic real fast. As I made my way slowly, inch by inch, dragging my belly over the rough limestone, I could feel my whole body trying to rebel, trying to stop me from going farther. But there wasn't any going back at this point. Crawling forwards was difficult enough. Crawling backwards would have been impossible. So, I kept going, mentally telling myself to shut the hell up and push forward. Soldier crawling, by the way, is a lot of damn work. You'd think climbing 30 feet up a rock wall is tough, but crawling on your belly, wriggling in the dirt, a hard floor below you and a sharp rock ceiling scraping at you from above is exhausting. You use every muscle you have, even some you didn't know existed. Despite the icy cold of the cave behind me, I was now drenched in sweat, the salty drops falling into my eyes, burning until I could free one of my hands to wipe them away. But I kept at it, scrapes and sweat and exhaustion be damned. Every so often, I would stop, holding my phone in front of me to see where I was going, but it didn't illuminate much. The rock extended out for what seemed like forever. It was about as disheartening as you can imagine no end in sight. But Google had said I needed to go forward 30 yards. I'd reach the end soon enough. And I did reach the end. I had been crawling in that godforsaken rocky tomb for at least a half an hour, if not longer. 
when Google finally spoke up again. In ten feet, exit into the passage ahead. Praise the Lord. Once Google told me I only needed to drag myself a few more feet, I was re-energized. I felt stronger, more resilient. I pressed forward, foot by foot, until I felt the edge of the crack in front of me. I could feel the cold air on my scratched and worn hands. I grabbed the edge and made to pull myself forward. And then, I got stuck. For a second, I thought I had just braced myself up against the rock awkwardly, but then I tried to move my leg again, and it wouldn't budge. It had wedged itself between the ceiling and the floor. I tried to look back, see if I could unstick myself, but it was pitch black, and then I did something really stupid. As my panic began to grow, I moved my phone hand around, trying to shine the light toward my leg, and that's when I dropped it. I could hear it clatter on the ground below, maybe ten feet down. I lost my composure. As I struggled to free my leg, I could feel the ceiling pushing in. I could feel the floor rise up. My other leg soon lodged between the rock as well, refusing to move. I reached one arm down, trying to pull my leg free. But it brought me at an odd angle, and I found myself on my side, wedged tightly in the rock, completely immobile. I tried everything I could to no avail. More than once, I thrashed against the rocks and banged my head hard against the ceiling. I could feel the stone cutting into my arms, peeling away at my skin. As the rock seemed to close in around me, my breathing became erratic. My blood pulsed past my eardrums, and I could feel the pounding of my heart as it threatened to jump straight out of my chest. And then I could feel the rock around me, drumming alongside me, as if the cave was alive. A deep moving thrum joining my heart in a psychotic rhythm, and once again I could feel the walls pressing in as I began to thrash once more, trying to free myself, trying to haul myself out of that damned crack in the rock. I could feel my lungs going, my panicked breaths becoming shorter and weaker, failing to fill with the air I needed. I could have sworn my ribs began to crack, and at long last, I let out a piercing wail, a desperate cry for help. And over my screaming, in the darkness ahead, I heard it. Do not struggle. Be still. I stopped dead. It was a little distant, but definitely audible. If you struggle, you will stay stuck. You must relax. Google was calling out to me from wherever I had dropped it and for some reason, it worked. That damn phone had done nothing but annoy the hell out of me all day, and now, in the middle of hell, it calmed me down. I stopped thrashing. I stopped screaming. I stopped trying to free my limbs from the rocky vice around me. Breathe. I obeyed the phone, taking in the air as slowly and as calmly as possible. I could feel the rock tighten around me as I filled my lungs, but I ignored it. I closed my eyes and just focused on my breathing, on my heartbeat. I shut out everything else. The cuts, the bruises, the rocks, the sweat, the blood. And at long last, I could almost feel the rock pull away, as if it had decided to finally just let me go. From the darkness, Google's voice rang once again. Exit the passage ahead. And I did. I had relaxed enough that with a little rocking back and forth, I could free my arm from my side. Once I was back on my belly, I kicked my legs back and felt them dislodge from the rock behind me. And then I grabbed the edge of the crack with both of my aching arms and pulled myself out into the cave. Luckily, the drop wasn't as high as I thought, maybe five feet. I tumbled to the ground and flopped over onto my back, gulping in the damp, cool air of the open passage. I laid there for what must have been ten minutes and Google must have been trying to be considerate because I didn't hear a peep for a long time. And then once I had regained my composure, a light a few feet ahead to my left turned on, and Google spoke. Continue left, down the path, for half a mile. I sighed and pulled myself onto an elbow, reached out and grabbed my phone. Luckily, the screen hadn't cracked in the fall. I looked at it bemusedly. Really? I can't rest for five more minutes? Continue left, down the path for half a mile. I rolled my eyes and hauled myself onto my feet, maybe a little too quickly. My body cried out from the bruises and cuts and stiff muscles. 
but I shook it off and half walked, half limped my way down the passage. Luckily, none of the half mile was interesting. No squeezing through fissures, no climbing cliffs, no creepy, unexplainable darkness ahead. And then slowly, but surely, the darkness around me seemed to lighten. The walls around me became clearer and more defined, and I was able to switch the flashlight on my phone off. I was rounding a corner when Google spoke up. In 100 feet, enter the light. And sure enough, 100 feet ahead, a shining point in the distance, was the tunnel exit. Bright light poured into the tunnel. I could almost feel the warmth on my skin, cutting through the frigid air of the cave. My heart skipped a beat and my spirits began to lift. A smile crept over my face as I walked toward the light, happy to be leaving this dank hellhole at last. As it turns out, the light was even worse. <laughs>